United Nations officials warned the Security Council on Friday that some 800,000 people in one Sudanese city are in extreme and immediate danger as worsening violence advances and threatens to unleash bloody intercommunal strike throughout Darfur. According to the UN, nearly 25 million people, half of Sudan's population, need aid and some 8 million have fled their homes. Political analyst David Monda tells viewers Douglas Mpuga he thinks the Sudan crisis has been overshadowed by conflicts elsewhere. I would rank that conflict probably as one of the worst in uh, modern history in the post-Cold um, War world. And uh, two big reasons why it's not getting a lot of headlines. Obviously, one is that uh, strategically, Sudan is just not on the radar of the major powers. And uh, Africa Union has historically been very weak in addressing some of these crises that uh, erupt on the continent. I think the second factor, obviously, would be Ukraine, Russia, and Israel, Hamas. And now that Middle Eastern problem, which seems to be expanding to Israel and, um, and Iran. So that's really taken attention away from Sudan. The other issue with Sudan is uh, it's also competing with other crises in Africa. You know, the problem in the starvation in Ethiopia that's now becoming a humanitarian crisis. Then the other crisis in the DRC, which has perennially been a big problem. And then in addition to that is also the fact that the international community tends to get very fatigued with this conflict. Like uh, similar conflicts, there are those who say there are external factors that are fueling that, that, that conflict. Do you agree with that? I definitely agree with that. And I think that's one of the reasons, what we call exogenous factors, right? These things that come from outside of Sudan. Obviously, one of the big ones is um, major players or regional actors that are involved in the conflict. So on one hand, you have the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, uh, Russia, which seem to have been favoring uh, General Hamedit. But then on the other hand, you have uh, the Burhan administration, which is supported by... uh, Israel and uh, and Egypt. So these foreign actors uh, make it even more complicated because as they say when you have too many cooks in the kitchen making the baking the cake becomes difficult. Each player has its own different interest in this cooking pot called Sudan. But I must also say that internally this problem is also very very difficult to solve because of historical memory, the crisis of how Sudan was brought together as a country of so many different types of ethnic groups and clans and religions. But more importantly, this divide between the central government of Burhan in Khartoum and Hamedit's forces, the RSF, which uh, get a lot of their support from the Darfur region in the western part of Sudan. So that's also really complicating this situation more. And it can even possibly lead to a split of Sudan into two. Uh, meaning Darfur also pushes for its own independence separate from uh, the central government in Khartoum. Somalia has earned new money to help it upgrade its security services in what officials said will help combat its perennial problem of Al-Shabaab. This week on Tuesday, the European Union said it had approved Euro 116 million, that's US dollar 117 million for stabilization efforts in Somalia via its political and security committee. The statement stated that Council approves further support under the European Peace Facility EPF to the Somali National Army SNA and to the military component of the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia at Miss. The EU added that it would add US dollar 75 million to the resources already mobilized for Atmis in previous years, covering July 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2023. It is said that previous support to the peacekeepers under the EPF amounted to Euro 270 million. The agreed funding for Somali National Army amounts to US dollar 43 million, while according to the EU, previous support to the SNA under the EPF amounts to US dollar 51 million. This came as the UK amount announced 
a contribution of US dollar 2.8 million in support of Somali security forces via the UN support office in Somalia. The funding will be used to provide non retho support to Somali security forces in fighting Al Shabaab, including rations, shelter, and medevac assistance. The new UK funding will support the provision and transport of resources such as food, rations, communication equipment, and tents, and will assist with medical evacuations of SSF troops conducting operations. A dispatch from the UK Embassy in Mogadishu said Dr. Azia Kilabo Chakachira, the head of UNSOS, welcomed the contribution by UK. Over the years, the UK has been the central donor to the trust fund in support of SSF. This most recent contribution shows their unwavering commitment in support of strengthening logistical support and capacity building to the benefit of Somalia's brave men and women, said Dr. Kachi Rer. Britain's support to Somalia security institutions is not new. It has provided US dollar 29.17 million of voluntary contributions in support of UNSOS since 2022. It also provided significant financial support to the Artemis, the embassy said. In February, UK Minister for Armed Forces, James Hepe, visited Mogadishu meeting President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed at Vira, Somalia, as well British soldiers training to SSF.